Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 here in the Rizu Forest. Now if I lower that one down there, I'll also be able to get this little bit here that we've left behind. And I can sort of just bring that in around like that. Let's not turn too sharp with this one. So this two more passes something like that that drops down in there has anyone used a set of mowers like this in real life because these are huge mowers like this is a seriously impressive kit I'm assuming that most farms wouldn't be running something this size I mean I can't think of any farms offhand that would run something this big Unless they were co-oping um, machinery with another farm as well. And I do know that some farmers do that. They have a joint co-op where they all team together and they buy some really big machinery. And then they share it for um, harvest and stuff like that. And it works really well. I've seen several of them doing this. And this is a way that a farmer can gain access to a piece of machinery that would cost more than my house would cost and is able to regularly use it because they've gone in on purchasing it with like five other farmers. So they're paying one sixth of the price for this monstrous great big piece of kit, which works really well. They do kind of like have to plan it out fairly well and help each other quite a lot so it you, you've got to have things written up nicely and you've got to get on with each other it's no good trying to set up for something like that if you really don't get along with your neighbor um you don't want to be setting up to run an operation like that if you you don't like him at all because uh that's that's just going to be a recipe for disaster and i need to go backwards there not forwards Right, let's go and get the fertilizer spinner on and we will start doing a little bit of fertilizer spinning. I've only got one field that I can spread first, but I mean, if we do that, then we'll set this one going up there and then the uh, we can go back to gathering up the silage in that field right there. And then when we've done that one, we can nip out and go and get the field 13 one as well. That'll be that little job done. Now, these houses up here, these were about 60,000, 70,000 apiece, I believe. And I am wanting to get more houses. We've got our industrial sort of quota for the moment. We, we definitely want to be getting some more houses going and sort of working on that fairly soon. But it's finding... It, yeah, i got to come up with the money for it. So that's going to be our next task, is finding the money to be able to actually have the um the, the buy the next lot of houses and i'm thinking that we'll probably go for a block of flats this time so have like a single lot and that's something a little bit different to what we've got at the moment so we have a little bit of variety going in there so we'll go whizzing up through here i'm gonna have another drink while we go racing up the hill very warm where I am today and it's overcast and cloudy and it doesn't look like it's very nice weather at all but the ambient temperature is still uh, low 20s which for us where I live is actually pretty high I know that for some of you low 20s is where you and I'm talking about 20 you know so 22 23 degrees celsius not fahrenheit um i i wouldn't have a clue what fa the low 20s fahrenheit actually means um not the foggiest but i do know that 22 23 degrees celsius is quite toasty warm it's not like scorching hot but you could go to the beach and be comfortable with it at least i could and you know people in this country can go to the beach and be comfortable with that although generally people only start hitting the beach in large numbers when the temperatures get up to the high 20s 
but there's still plenty of people that will hit the beach in the low 20s and I also know that there are people who watch this series that uh, currently the mouths are basically just hanging open in abject horror at the thought of going anywhere near a beach in the low 20s when low 20s is basically making them want to wrap up in a thick toasty blanket and you know just have a fire going or something like that um i'm not sure if those particular people like you i know that there are some australians who watch who think that anything below 30 degrees c is you know winter temperatures this kind of thing and i'm yeah i'm 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 I do wonder sometimes if perhaps these particular Australians are cold-blooded. Now, I, I say this with the utmost respect, of course. I'm not suggesting that you're unpleasant people in any way, because um, calling someone cold-blooded is also a way of saying that they're unpleasant. So I'm not saying that, but I am suggesting that perhaps they don't have an entirely normal human body, because... How can any, like seriously, how can 30 degrees be barely tolerable when it comes to warmth and you want more than that? There's, there's got to be something deeply, deeply wrong with you. 30 degrees and I'm turning into a puddle. Any more than 30 degrees and I'm, I'm struggling to sort of do anything at all. This includes just walking around and breathing. I'm I just, just, yeah, it's just, just me and a... a well, the, the pile of clothes and a puddle of sweat on the floor is about all that's left when it gets plus 30. And there were parts of my country that recorded plus 40 degrees not all that long ago. And it was quite an eye-opener. A lot of people were saying, oh yeah, it's just summer. It, you know, it's, it's nothing to get worked up about. It's nothing to worry about. It's fine. And then 40 degrees actually came along to the British Isles. And the difference is that yes there are plenty of countries that have 40 degrees on a very regular basis and I'm not trying to dispute this in any way shape or form and I'm not even trying to say that it's you know what well, I don't know what I'm not trying to say but um, what I am saying is that here in this country we have extremely high humidity and the high humidity is always the issue that's the big problem that we have here is that high humidity a lot of the countries where you have these regular high temperatures humidity isn't very high so if you've got if it's dry then it's fine but when you've got 90 90 percent humidity your sweat can't evaporate properly it's very difficult for your sweat to evaporate at 90 90 percent humidity so when you've got that coupled up with a temperature that exceeds the normal human body temperature you can't sweat and you can't cool down and that's when it becomes quite dangerous actually and it was quite an, an issue i don't think the humidity got as high as 90 percent when it was um uh at 40 degrees but keep in mind that it's very unusual in this country to have humidity anything below 60 percent and humidity is almost always really high so when we start talking about temperatures exceeding 30 degrees you've also got to keep in mind that we don't have a low humidity of like 20 percent where you can just sweat and the sweat cools you down which is what happens that's, that's how the cooling system in the human body works you sweat the sweat forms this layer of moisture on your skin and then that moisture evaporates and it's that act of sweat evaporating off of your skin that's the bit that actually cools you down when you're in a high humidity environment such as in a sauna or anywhere in the uk in summer um you your sweat doesn't evaporate rapidly and so you can't cool down rapidly and it it becomes a real genuine struggle for some people to cool down. Some people literally just cannot cool down because the humidity is too high and you end up having major problems. That is why people end up being hospitalized with heat stroke because they physically cannot cool their bodies. Their body just physically won't cool down um, and this starts to become a serious problem. So you sort of got to take it, take that in into account when you hear these stories um 
for those of you who live in really um, warm places, I've, I know that there's Arizona, I think it is. I think someone lives in Arizona and they say, oh, you know, we get these sorts of temperatures all the time. I believe that Arizona is also a desert, and so you don't have massive... I, I'd be interested to know, anybody that does live in a hot climate, anyone that lives in a hot climate um, and regularly experiences 30 degrees plus, I have no idea what that means in Fahrenheit. I can't give you a translation. You'd have to go and Google that one. Um, but anyone that has 30 degrees plus on a regular basis and you think that is quite a comfortable temperature. What is your normal humidity levels? What's, what's the normal humidity for that right there? Now, I'm just going to go and I'm, I'm just got my phone in front of me right now. And I'm taking a look at my forecast for today. So, relative to the humidity that we've got at the moment. So, the temperature is currently... 24 degrees it's 23 24 degrees today for this afternoon humidity is 65 percent at the moment and it's going up to 80 percent a little bit later on with the temperature still at 20 degrees and the humidity will be 80 it was actually going to go up to 87 percent a bit later on um it, it will cool down a little tiny bit it'll be 19 degrees but at the moment at 24 degrees we're between 65 and 70 percent humidity which is really really high humidity so there's already a massive amount of moisture in the air and that's kind of that's that's what we're up against right anyway uh this is actually we're done now aren't we we're done up there i'll come back to this one and i'll wash this one off in a second I want to go to this one over here. What are you doing? Why are you under the tree here without having finished everything? Have you finished everything? Just about finished everything. We'll do a quick run up through here, and then we'll go and get it, get uh, get going on the next field. I'll do once around the outside of the next field, and then I will leave the hired help to go and do the rest. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm really interested. Anyone that lives in a warm climate or a hot climate, however you want to describe it, please tell me what is your sort of average summer temperatures? Uh, what's the temperature right now? But also, what is your average humidity? What's the humidity like? Because I'm of the opinion that if you've got high temperatures but low humidity, it becomes an awful lot more bearable than if you're sort of wandering around. It's it's basically, if you've got um, temperature in excess of 30 degrees and you've got a humidity of about 75%, it's like trying to breathe soup. You Literally, that, that's what we're doing. That's, that's what we do here in the UK. We don't breathe air here in the UK. We breathe lightly oxygenated soup. And that does tend to make it a little bit more difficult for us. So that's that's kind of what we're up against here. We we don't we don't breathe air in the UK. We breathe soup all through the summer, and then when it gets to winter, we we all breathe a sigh of relief because finally the temperatures have cooled down. The humidity hasn't. In the winter, the humidity very often goes all the way up to 100% because it's generally raining all of the time. So yes, yeah, it's, it's not surprising to have higher humidity, but that's not always the case. Like I've actually known. Times in the winter where you, you check the humidity. I, I mean, I don't pay all that much attention to it, but I do know that humidity in the winter can vary hugely. And it's quite surprising how much it can vary in the winter. Um, but yes, it's not unusual to have 100% humidity at any time of the year here in the UK. And 100% humidity means that the air is saturated with moisture and you can't get any more moisture to evaporate into the air and this is where it becomes a very serious problem for anybody involved with you know wanting to stay alive if the temperature is really high and that's kind of what we're up against so when you hear these stories about the brits can't cope with high temperatures just keep in mind that there is actually a very logical 
explanation for that. And this isn't, it's not just something that affects us. This is something that they have a major problem with in Japan and parts of China as well. Uh, Japan in particular, they uh, quite frequently have very, very high um, humidity levels, but they also have high temperatures that they're having to deal with. And there's certain parts of Japan now that it's becoming a very, very serious problem. It's like becoming a bit of a, a public health crisis to the point where in some regions in Japan, it's actually becoming common for people to stop working for quite a long period during the day if the temperature is high so that they can go indoors somewhere and work uh, or do something where they've got... Let me just lift that one up a minute. Um, air conditioning, just just to cool down. There, I know that we've got a load of fertilizer in the back, and I've just filled it up with water, but we'll ignore that bit. Pretend that didn't happen. So that's everything done for today. I don't think there's anything else that we want to do there. That one can stop. We will jump over to this one here a minute, and... Just wash that one off. I'm surprised it did all three items, actually. It isn't normally. It normally only does two items. But that's fine. I'm quite happy with that. That's, this, this is a positive thing. So I'll bring this one over and I'm going to park this one underneath the spout over this side. And I've got a load of logs that I do want to move, but I'm not going to do that at the moment. So I'm just going to shut that one off there. And then we've got the lorry here. I'm actually gonna. I'm not gonna move anything there. And then I've got this one down here. Now I think I got most of the tree stumps from here. There's one there I didn't get quite clearly. But I think I got most of the rest of the tree stumps when we walked out of here last time. So we've got our road that will come down through. Yeah, looks pretty good. Right, let's go and get a lorry. Actually, let's not yet. We're going to sleep the night first. Now, our cattle, let's just double check on the animals because I can't remember what we've got and where. Uh, we're going to want three more. Uh, no, 12. We're, we're doing 12. So we're going to want 12 more animals in a very short space of time. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to sleep until 8 o'clock tomorrow. I know I knocked off at lunchtime and skipped half of the day, but that's fine. We've just done a big job there, so that's, that's absolutely perfectly acceptable. And we will now jump over to the truck. I'll leave everything exactly as it is right now, and I'm going to go and get the trailer. Now, I don't actually remember where I've left the trailer. Did I leave it up that way or did I leave it down at the sawmill? Uh, is that it? It's, oh, it's just... just down here. Oh, there it is. Right. We're going to grab that one. We're going to go and take a quick trip to the... Actually, no, we're, we're not going to take a trip to the sawmill yet because we're going to load up the logs and then we're going to take all of the logs down to the sawmill. That's the uh, aim here. So let's load that one up there. And pull on out, and then we'll go over to where we've cut those logs down, and we'll put this onto the sawmill. So the trees there, they're pretty much going to stay, and then we've got some more on that side there where we're going to sort of do a boundary for this field here. Those we're going to want to remove, and not only are we going to want to remove them, we're also going to want to... Um, so, uh, plow up and turn that into a bit of field and then we've got a big field project to do down the bottom now most of the trees down the bottom i will end up just chopping those down um with out anything extra we will just chop them up nice and quick we're not going to mess around with those i didn't actually want to drag those logs down the hill that's not part of the master plan. I want to stop about there and then I suspect that it's loading the wrong side there so let's change side. Right. This could be difficult. 
Let's go here. Stop auto load wood. Oh. Uh, U doesn't change. So switch auto load to the right. There we go. That's better. Uh, but that's loading the back piece. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to change that over. And then I'm going to load the front one. Do, 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 do. Uh, switch pile. There, now I'm, I'm on pile number one. I always have to use the controls for this one to sort of try and remember what goes where. There's no shame in that, by the way. I mean, some people seem to think that you should be ashamed of having to use those controls. I don't. I don't at all. I don't believe there is any shame to be had in needing to just double check what the controls are for anything. Let's just slowly bring you down here. Alright, we've missed one. Yeah, you know I'll turn that one off and then I'm not going to accidentally pick it up. Well, I'm reversing. We don't want to pick that up while we're reversing, only while we're going forwards. You're going to pick up. There we go. Ideal. Right, I'll take the straps off and then just slowly inch forwards. Is this going to be a lorry load or are we going to need to get a few more to make a, like a proper lorry load on this? I don't know. It's already gone and switched, which I didn't want it to do, so I'm going to switch it back to the front one again. Because we've got quite a, a big part of it down there right now we do need to go a little bit slowly just here I don't want to spam in hundreds of logs just yet we've got more room up the front this is gonna be actually a decent lorry load with those last few logs down there this is gonna be a decent load it just slowly does it don't wanna get too carried away here There we go. Right, now I'm going to switch that to the front and that's loading. Excellent. Right. Let's just go slowly. And we will catch it just like that. So, um, I think that one was ready to fall off now i could put like two more logs maybe on the back i don't think i'd be able to get a whole tree's worth so i'm not going to bother trying with that what i do need to do now is actually turn around this is going to be a bit more of a challenge because we've now got a full load and the thing that i really love about this auto load and the thing that i love about the pallet auto load that i normally use is that it loads and then gives you the full weight of the item in the vehicle so you're actually having to tow it and move it the only thing that i'm sort of faking and speeding up is the actual loading process the ferrying process the, the moving process i'm not that that's not being faked and i really like that i think that's a really cool aspect of this that tree there has got to go so let's do that a minute it's that one right there that one's going to be right in our way there we go. Okay, that one's out of the way. We will come over here. This. And now we need to do some construction work. So we're going to bring this one down. Now I'm thinking the... I'm liking the cracked earth for this one. I'm thinking that this is going to be something that we're going to do for this track. So we'll keep that as kind of like a theme for it. Now we'll switch that over difficulty arises trying to make this into a proper track we'll deal with the top bit in a minute there we go so it's just bringing it down slowly it's not actually painting all of it see there's a big piece there that's not 
properly painting, but that's that's actually fine. That, that's it kind of fits. And fits well actually, looking at it. Yeah. Because not everything is gonna be cracked like that. There we go, I just wanted to get rid of that bush. And then we can come down here like that. A bit more there. And then on this side. Yeah, that'll do. Just trying to find the exact right width to keep them apart. To make it work. Just like here. There. And again, I'm trying to make this random, which means... Did any of you do your homework? Remember what I said last time? If you're trying to make it look random, it's not going to be random. If you're going to actually have it random, and it's machine random, then, yeah, it it won't look like it's something that's done randomly. And this is something that is quite common with machines. So there's not a lot that you can do about it. Right, so I think that we should put in a little bit of gravel in here in places. Because, like, I'm, I'm sort of thinking that this is a gravelly type soil. So we've got this dry cracked earth here in places. And then anywhere that we don't have the dry cracked earth. I'm going to add in some bits of this. And I may even put in some extra bits here in places. So we'll just mix in a little bit of that. There. Just like the, the odd bit here and there. And, yeah, here we go. Hmm. What if I should try and get rid of the... I should try and get rid of the plants. That means I've got to redo it all. I could run a mower down through. That would get rid of the plants. Actually, no, I don't need to. I know how we can do this. We can try and do this with some extra bits in a in a, in a little while. So we're just going to bring that down there. And that'll be the cracked earth that we're using there. And then we'll put in a strip of gravel here. We'll also put a bit up the side. Going to be a lot of gravel in around this bit here, I think. Couple little bits of grass as well. And some plants obviously are gonna get left behind as well. So we're not gonna get rid of all of the plants. I think this track is actually gonna come out looking quite good. Like that. Alright, that's that's the Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.